This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Tamiya's spiffy new Spitfire, Tacom's tank transporter, Edward's little MiG-21, a painting holder with a difference, and Academy's Stug 4. New product rundown brought to you by HobbyZone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to the new product rundown. Something. <laughs> Aww. You forgot the name of the show? <laughs> it's a good show. You'll like it. Welcome to the new Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly show where we look inside some of the latest kits and accessories. I'm Elizabeth Nash. I'm Aaron Skinner. The subject of our first kit today needs little introduction as the Supermarine Spitfire is one of the most recognizable aircraft in history. What is perhaps surprising is that Tamiya chose to revisit an early Mark I, an aircraft that the company kitted back in 1993. Yeah, and that remains a nice kit and an easy to build replica of Supermarine's freshman fighter. But this all new kit shows just how far model manufacturing has come in the last 25 years. In the original kit, the cockpit comprised just 14 parts. Not including photo etch, this one uses 37 parts, including a properly curved floor and structural elements molded into the fuselage halves and lower wing. Optional upper cockpit sections allow for the canopy to be posed closed or open. The section after the cockpit is narrowed slightly so the canopy sliding section sits correctly. Other cockpit parts include the firewall, three fuselage frames, a three-part seat, controls, pedals, oxygen tanks, instrument panel, with decal dials, and a pilot. Photo Etch Stainless Steel provides the harness with optional parts if you use the pilot. Also here are gun sight parts, foot loops for the pedals, frame details, a rudder hinge bracket, and radiator and intake screens. Surface detail on the major airframe parts is fine recessed panel lines and a few rivets and Zeus fasteners. Tamiya molded reinforcements inside the rear fuselage and tail that help prevent warping. The chin and carburetor intake behind it as well as the upper front are separate parts. The one-piece lower wing will establish dihedral, and the upper wings include part of the wing root fairing with the brake along natural panel lines. The wings also have molded reinforcements. Separate muzzles are given for the outer guns. The oil cooler and radiator intakes underneath look good. The ailerons and rudder are separate, but the elevators are molded with the horizontal stabilizers. The exhausts are well designed with separate parts for the rearmost pipes on each stack that should give them a realistic appearance but I'm especially impressed with the way Tamiya has done the landing gear. The legs of the mains are molded together with a center section which should perfectly align them and the wheels. The clear parts feature two styles of windshield, armored windscreens with two styles of rear view mirrors, open and closed sliding sections, two styles of gun sight, and lights. Unused parts hint at other versions to come. Masks are provided. A small set of self-adhesive parts at a vent window to the canopy and panels to the fuel tank section on the earliest version. The instructions are clear about which parts to use for which versions. Decals provide markings for three Mark I's, including a pre-war version, one from the evacuation of Dunkirk, and one from the Battle of Britain. There have been a lot of Spitfire kits over the years, and both Edward and Airfix have terrific offerings. This one joins them as Tamiya sets a new benchmark for quality and engineering. The M1070 and M1000 head or heavy equipment transport is a big vehicle at more than 70 feet long. That means that Hobby Boss's 135th scale kit comes in at more than 2 feet long, which makes it a bit of a shelf hop. And this is where Tacom's 172nd scale M1070 and M1000 come in handy. Finished, it'll be less than a foot long. Yeah, and this has a bonus in the form of a payload, a D9R bulldozer. While there are some concessions to scale, like the dozer's tracks being molded in one piece with the drive sprocket and rear and front road wheels, the kit packs in detail. The rest of the dozer running gear includes the other half of the guide track and the Caterpillar suspension units. The body and cab are molded as single parts with good louvers on the engine housing and controls inside the cab. The rest of the cab includes front panels, roof with molded hatch, and seats. Outside is the ripper with bracket and a bunch of pistons and other details. The front is the business end, with the two-part dozer blade, backed by big pistons, and supported by heavy arms that attach to the Caterpillar bodies. The trailer with its flatbed, central frame, ramps, and gooseneck hitch looks like a breeze to build until you get a look at the 10 suspension units, 40 two-part wheels, and the bag of tires to go with them. They do have good tread molded on. The M1070 Prime Mover mounts on a one-piece frame with the lower parts of the engine molded in, to which is added the four drive axles, mounted on heavy leaf springs at the front and big air suspension units in the rear. In between is a transfer case and drive shafts and along the rails fuel tanks, stowage boxes, 
fenders, along with the fifth wheel, and other details at the back. The cab largely comprises one piece that gets detailed front and back seats, dashboard with separate steering wheel, and roof. The cab doors are on the clear sprues, along with the windshield, rear windows, and the ballistic glass blocks for the dozer. The truck's big wheels get wrapped with nicely molded rubber tires. A small photo etch fret supplies tread plate for the truck's rear deck, mirror frames, and windshield wipers. A tiny decal sheet has placards and markings for two trucks, one in sand, the other in NATO camo. The dozer just wears sand. If you're looking for a big project on a small scale, this would be the perfect option. It would work well with a small scale Abrams. Or, and if you do this, send FSM photos, you could have the M1070 pulling an Iraqi MiG-25 out of the sand as seen in some photos online. We looked at the Royal Class Edition of Edward's 172nd scale MiG-21 a few episodes back, but the single Profi Pack kits are out now, including this MiG-21 MF. As with the dual kit Royal Boxing, the beautifully molded airframe parts have fine recessed panel lines and tiny rivets. There's a decent cockpit, engine intake, jet pipe, an exhaust nozzle, landing gear bays, poseable air brakes, and canopy with pre-cut masks. There's also a good selection of underwing stores with two sizes of fuel tanks, three types of air-to-air -air missiles, and rocket pods. A color photo etch fret provides instrument panels and consoles, as well as the seat harness and some small details. The decals provide markings for five MiGs, a North Vietnamese fighter with a natural metal finish, an Egyptian plane in sand and green camo, a terrific looking camouflage Soviet aircraft with a shark mouth, a Polish MiG in two-tone gray, and a green and brown Czechoslovakian fighter from the late 1980s. There's also a full set of stencils. Edward's little MiG looks terrific in the box, and these single kits will be a welcome addition to many workbenches. Hobby Zone USA sent us this nifty airbrush painting clips holder. The sturdy wooden box stays closed thanks to magnets. It stores 10 flexible arms with fine alligator clips that will easily hold small parts for painting. Then the pegboard style lid supports the arms as the parts dry. Another useful item from Hobby Zone. Finally, here's a quick look at Academy's 135th scale Stug 4. This kit follows the Korean manufacturer's Panzer IV, so many of the parts are common. Including much of the nicely molded lower hull, glasses plate, and engine deck. Also reused are the suspension and running gear parts, including the drive sprockets and idlers, road wheels and bogies, as well as the return rollers, and the vinyl tracks, fenders and exhaust, and the lower rear plates and spare track links. Your spares will get a boost with unused parts like the skirt plates. As you might expect, the new parts focus on the Stug casemate and gun. The bulk of the superstructure is molded as a single part. Inside is the mount for the gun and the support and the breech end of the weapon that fits into the Salkoff mantlet. The one-piece main gun uses the muzzle brake supplied with the Panzer IV. The rest of the casemate includes the roof with separate hatches, driver's cover, and machine gun position. Decals and color diagrams provide markings for four German vehicles in Normandy, Russia, Greece, and Germany. Unlike the Panzer IV, this kit doesn't include three-dimensional decals for Zimmerit. Instead, the instructions give hints on applying the coating with putty. Another nice offering from Academy. Look for reviews of the Spitfire, Tank Transporter, and MiG-21 in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see more new products in the December issue on sale now. Also on sale now is Damaged. Pick up a copy today. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I stopped to see a weeping willow. Crying on his pillow, maybe he's crying for me. And as the skies turn gloomy, and night winds whisper to me, I'm lonesome as I can be. I go out walking after midnight, out in the moonlight. <laughs> Just hoping you will be somewhere a-walking after midnight, searching for FSM. <laughs>